Harlan's Wake, Part 3. Come early morning, Michael sat outside by the fire while a heated debate raged inside the ramshackle brown house. There's no damn way that thing's set in foot in this house. Uncle Hugh blew foul cigarette smoke out his nostrils. You know how your father feels about those things, Tyler. Tom had disappeared into Harlan's room after he and Uncle Jack had seen the chase boys off their property, wisely keeping the chase's knives, shotgun, and pitchfork. He hadn't emerged for the hours that followed, while Vida and Jack paced around Tyler, frightened out of their wits by the night's events. For God's sakes, this is Shooter County, boy, not New York or Washington, Uncle Hugh whispered, as if afraid of insulting the being he would not even let enter the home of Harlan Brown. Come tomorrow, there's going to be a lynch mob outside our door. Tyler stood up angrily, and Hugh backed away, Tyler's recent display of fighting skill alienating him all the more from his uncle. Lynch mobs! Jesus, how could Shooter County still think like this? Tyler wondered to himself, but he knew it was true. Price City was only forty miles away, the interstate not even five, but everyone here was still scared of what lay just down that road. Tyler paced to the kitchen, leaning his weight against it and breathing deep to calm himself. Michael wouldn't hurt a fly unless attacked, Hugh. It's not in him. Uncle Hugh collected his hat and coat from the rack by the door and quickly dressed. You believe what you want, boy, but those silvers ain't natural. Come now, Vida. Aunt Vida crossed her arms. Hugh, you old fool. What do you think, that critter's some kind of vampire come to suck our brother's blood? He's Tyler's friend, and that's why he's here. She gazed through thoughtfully at Tyler. Don't you see it yet? Ty's got himself in a lot of trouble for coming here. That's what this Silver's visit is all about. Ain't that so, boy? <sighs> You're still the smartest lady I've ever known on Fi, Tarla thought, amazed. He made some small slip, and she had seen through him, figured it all out. He smiled weakly. She nodded, satisfied, and walked to the screen door. Pushing it open, she shook her head sadly at her brother. You go on home, Hugh. I'll be along soon. Hugh bristled, snapping his head from his nephew to his sister before storming out. Vida eased the door quietly shut behind him. Tyler joined her there and watched his uncle skirt nervously past the fire pit where Michael sat, rubbing Blue's ears. Thank you, Vi. She nodded, near tears, the tension in her large frame obvious. It's a bloody shame folks got to hold on to what scares them so tight, Di. Your granddaddy talked the same way about the... The big woman's words failed her, and she waved out to Michael and smiled like a wide-eyed child when he waved back. That boy is miraculous, you ask me. Nothing to be scared of. Vi laughed, then sniffed against her tears. Look at that mutt drooling over your friend. And I've never known a better judge of character than that hairball. She put a hand on Tyler's cheek, then averted her eyes. But your uncle's right, Tyler. Face burning with embarrassment, she continued. Shooter County's not a good place for him. Not yet. Vi drew Tyler close, throwing an arm over his shoulder and nodding, as if all outstanding issues had been settled. You'll have your bed, Tyler. You'll watch over your father tonight. She withdrew her arm and stepped out of the door as the first droplets of rain began to fall. Turning, still walking backwards, she shouted, And I want to hear about this trouble you've gotten yourself in before you run off again. You hear me, boy? Yes, ma'am, Tyler called out from the porch. As Blue bounded up the steps and skittered into the kitchen as the rain started hammering against the tin roof, he watched as Aunt Vida wished Michael a good night, her face lighting up with a smile that Michael returned, and then she walked into the darkness. The silver watched her depart into the woods, oblivious of the rain falling harder and harder upon him. It was a door, Ty. Tom stood in the doorway to their father's room, face pale. His mouth worked hard, the sounds didn't come easy. Of all the times to bring one of them here. Papa said 
You were damned, but I always hoped I could. But now, of all the damned times, Tyler. Shivering, Tyler stepped back into the room, stopping at the kitchen table and leaning on it. Pa. Tom's voice fell soft. It'll be tonight. Tyler stepped out of his father's room at dawn to find Michael sitting at the kitchen table. I am sorry to have interrupted your father's death, Lieutenant, the alien said. Tyler said nothing, just stepped over the dog lying unconscious on the floor and poured the water down the sink, then turned the cold tap full. Soaking the face cloth and wringing it out, then filling the large bowl, Tyler tried to ignore the hacking from his father's room, squeezing his eyes shut and bowing his head. His suffering will not last. Your father will lose consciousness soon, Michael stated. Tyler didn't ask how he knew. The Silvers had whole senses devoted to death that the lab rats were still puzzling out. Their ability to predict illness in fellow soldiers had scared him at first, before he got used to it. But right then, in his dying father's kitchen, it reached inside him and made him angry. I know, Tyler growled, fighting down an uglier response. And concerning your hasty exit from base, you needn't worry, Lieutenant. The alien's human host's mouth informed him. You are no longer absent without leave. Then, as the damned Silvers did so often, Michael switched tracks in the conversation so quick as to prove his otherness once again. You have been reassigned to provide for my security. I have requested your assignment term be listed as indefinite. How long do you think you will need to grieve? He's not dead yet! Tyler slammed the ceramic bowl down in the sink, chill water lapping over his fists. I burned my career down behind me to come back to... What, a brother that hates me? A and a father so far gone he thinks I'm still nine years old? The words came ragged now. I and I can't even say goodbye? Michael's eyes widened, but Tyler had opened his wound and he kept going, tasting salt water spill down his cheek into his mouth. Now you gotta arrive here, a place you're not safe. So while I'm trying to get a handle on my father dying, Tyler thought. My father dying. I I'm supposed to think of a way to get you out of here in one piece, right? Well, I can't do that right now. The silver stood motionless in the middle of the small kitchen, rain beating atop the tin roof, the only sound to follow the words. Then Michael covered the quicksilver flowing across a gash in his shoulder with both palms and lowered his head. A silver gesture not of pain, but of deep apology. No, more, Tyler realized, of shame. Tyler! Tom shouted hoarsely. Come quick! The water from the dropped bowl pooled at Michael's still feet as Tyler ran. Blood. So much blood, and the smell of a sea of copper. The frail body clung too hard to life, and brittle joints cracked with the urgent need to climb out of its nearing coffin. No words escaped Harlan's mouth, the mouth that had taught, cheered, and punished the two men that now attended every misshapen sound. Then Harlan Brown sighed out his last breath. For Tyler, no sound penetrated past that last breath. The moment his father became still, his brother's shrieks, the rolling thunder, even his own pounding heart disappeared. It's too late. Harlan's son realized. The storm hid the day, and winds tore the air. Tyler climbed the hill behind the house, his senses blessedly beaten back by the storm's wrath. Tyler was deaf to the world and his own sobs. The sting of the rain pelted his face, and he walked into the fury, shoulders straight, arms open and beckoning. When the mud beneath his feet gave way, he fell to his knees, still crying. When his knees gave, he fell to his side, punching the soft ground, cursing death, crawling uphill. Too guilty and too angry for sleep, he denied its release with every blow he threw, no matter the number of times his fist pummeled into the earth. It wasn't enough. Sliding earth and blowing wind inevitably threw the soldier back downhill, 
his strength gone before the elements, if not his pain. It took more time, huddled against the woodshed, before he could make himself return to the dark house. Inside the kitchen, ingrained habit made him pick the cistern from the floor, carry it delicately to the counter. Tyler's hands and face burned from the force of the rain even as his body shivered from the cold. The homecoming he yearned for would never come. There would be no greeting, no forgiveness, no peace with his father. There was nothing for him in this house now. His brother hated him too. Incapable of making his feet carrying him to either the bedroom or outside and away, Indecision turned into exhaustion, and Tyler surrendered into a kitchen chair. Slowly sound returned, the drip of water from his soaked body, and something else. Oh, Christ, Tom. Tyler urged his beaten body forward and leaned against the doorframe to the bedroom. He peered into the room, letting his eyes unfocus to find the shapes in the dark. The figure sitting on the bed beside Harlan shuddered, one hand pressed into the corpse's chest, and a cry shook that form. It pulled at Tyler's heart. Tom, he called to the fitfully shaking form on the bed. What? The sleepy answer to Tyler's call didn't come from the bed. Reality bent for a moment before he could place the sound and track it to the chair beside the bed. His hand batted the light switch, without conscious thought, and light filled the room to sear images into Tyler's brain. Tom slumped unconscious in the chair, and Michael atop his father. Harlan's once again opened eyes met Tyler's full of uncomprehending horror. His blue lips were pulled back to scream, but his mouth was full, and he could not. Between the two men, wet, shining, alive, writhed a cord of quicksilver pouring from Michael's mouth and into Harlan's. The wet, undying smell of the silver that poured out of Michael's chest, that was the real Michael, that poured out of his mouth into his father's mouth, reached Tyler and snapped him to action. He bounded to the bed, yanking on the slick sheets below his father's reanimated body and sending Harlan tumbling to the floor breaking his union with Michael. In the same motion, Tyler grabbed the wooden frame of the bed and kicked his feet up into Michael's face, falling and turning protectively over his father's body. The side of Michael's face split under Tyler's foot as he stumbled backwards, and a line of silver dripped from it as he calmly stood, hands raised palm out. I have... I haven't... Weak from his merge with Harlan... Michael's words and movements were slurred, warped, now utterly alien. Bastard! Tom charged the alien, driving his hunting knife into its uninjured shoulder and pinning it against the wall. Tyler found his footing and raised himself to join his brother's assault when he heard the words, No, tight. Tyler heard the words, and so did Tom. The room stopped. They turned to face their father. Harlan's eyes moved from his two boys, lips curling away from the yellow teeth in a vicious snarl. Tom will keep that critter where it's put. Tyler fell to his knees, a stone in his throat. P pa The old man swung thin legs over the side of the bed. Sunken eyes locked on Tyler as he stood, and with alien strength kicked the boy across the floor and into the doorframe, cracking the old wood with the force of his blow. Bring the devil to my home, will you? I'll put you in the ground, Tyke, like I should have done years ago. Harlan's Wake Part 3